So hello, welcome to a new episode here of my Play and Explain the 25NL Zoom on Poker Stars. Here we have a tricky one. So it's this guy here who likes to raise to 4x. I have Ace Jack offsuit on the button. And I decided to fold here because I just saw him do that with Ace King. Now, I'm not sure if he maybe always raises to 4x, but just because it is such a high or a big raise, I think the ace-jack off doesn't do very well against. So let's see if we can get into a few interesting spots today. Recently not been running very good. So that's another one where I'm hoping that I can do a little better here. So we're opening ace four suited standard here. In the cutoff, we get three bet by a fairly tightish player in the small blind. I think we have to fold here. There is a small frequency of a four bet there with ace four suited maybe, but not against a tight player. And even if we 4-bet there, it's never really profitable. It's pretty much just break-even. So against a tight player, it's better to not do that. Yeah, we have a very slow player in the cutoff. Come on. Taking your time is good, but not pre-flop. I mean, I guess it's just distracted. I don't think he's actually tanking about whether to open or not. And this means that we can open here. Next one, tanking, okay. Call. This is not a range bet, however, I will bet it here because I have an open ender and I could clean out some equity if he has a hand like queen 10, for example, king jack, something like that, that he decided not to three bet pre, then I might get an easy fold. Here now with this, yeah, he's not a very aggressive player, however, obviously I have a call here. And we do get our straight. And let's see what he does now. We have the nuts at the moment. And he bets half pot. It's a tricky one. What should we do here? I think we have to now go for it because he's telling us he has a really good hand. I am just going to make it something like this. And the thing is, if he has two pair or a set even, I don't think he will fold here. And I don't think he has nothing with the line that he's taken. And here, I mean, it is very unlikely that he has uh, flush, which means that we still have the nuts. The problem is, will we get paid by a set and I think we will because it's blind versus blind here and um, it's quite unlikely that we would have uh, flush so yeah he had the ace and I'm actually surprised that he stacked off I mean I th would have thought that's a fold there like with the line that I've taken it was just so strong that I'm actually very surprised that he called there even on the flop, I think he could have actually folded. Not sorry, not flop, on the turn, obviously, on the flop he check raised, which even that I thought was a little bit thin. Well, let's concentrate on this one here. So this is a board that I will see bet big if I do so. And I get an easy fold. Yeah, so just getting back to, to that hand from before there. Um, I think with the ace-9, it was a bit thin to even check raise, to, to, to raise, not check raise, to just raise the um, flop and then to continue and call my check raise on the turn. Here with pocket kings, we have an easy one. Here, 
this is a tricky one. I think I will go for the check raise here because this board is not necessarily great for me. Now the 10, I think you would have bet pocket tens and I'm now going a little bit bigger because I still want to get it in here. So let's go just under half pot. The thing is, now yeah, this is tricky now. He's now really saying he's got a big hand, but the thing is I have to get it in. I can't fold. He can have queens or jacks. There is a chance he has ten, tens or nines, but I actually, no, look at this. We are super deep, actually, um, which means I have to call here. And now when the clubs come in, this is really not great, and he is shoving. <sighs> this is not great, but the way he is playing this one, he is really showing a lot of strength. And all I have is an over pair. It's really tricky. But for a hundred big blinds, this would have been a no brain call here, or just I would have got it in on the turn after he uh, raised me there. But I think I here it's a fold, and I timed out, but I would have folded anyway because. I just don't think he would be that aggressive with pocket queens or pocket jacks, which means that he either had slow played aces or a set. And even a flush is not impossible on that uh, board, obviously, because the, the flush can in on the river, so it's possible that he raised me with a flush draw, although I think I would discounted quite heavily but I think he just didn't care about the flush and yeah it's possible that he did that with pocket queens but I think he might have bet queens it, it looked to me like he had a set there or maybe aces as I said that he slow played so I think Solver might actually, despite being 200 big blinds deep, Solver might have called there, but I think humans are not good at risking 200 big blinds in a pot uh, with, with a bluff. And yeah, maybe pocket queens, but even that is quite unlikely. I think most humans just wouldn't really risk 200 big blinds with pocket queens. Oh, there is not a lot worse that they could get called by. Anyway, a bit of a shame, but we still had a good start. And I'm okay with the way I played that hand. Well, at least we have gone down to 131 now, so we don't need to play 200 big blind pots anytime soon. Or 200 big blind plots, yes, but not like 200 deep. That's what I meant. Ace 8 off will be an open, but not a continue against a raise. Pocket 9s in the low jack. Okay, we get 3 bet by the big blind, which. I would usually overfold to it. Pocket nines is just a cuspy hand, especially because he only makes it nine big blinds deep. So I decide to call here, and here I definitely have to peel, even though I do not have a diamond. I would prefer to have one, but I have a gut shot, and so it's an easy peel. Depends what he does now. If he bets again, which he doesn't do, but he should check some over pairs here as well. I think I am going to check here and take my equity. And let's see, if he checks, I have an easy check behind. If he bets, yeah, he checks behind. This probably means that we have the best hand. However, if I bet here, I'm not going to get called by a worse hand. So I just check back and win against ace queen so that was an easy one 
But yeah, if if he had bet on the river, and I think he should have bet on the river there because he can't win with an ace. But then on the other hand, um, yeah, I think it was fine here. Sorry, just interrupting. Two point six x king eight is very borderline. Um, I just go the lower variance route. I think there is no harm done. Yeah, so he he must have known that his ace high is most likely not good there on the river. However, after I called the big C bet on the flop, he must have just given up. And I think he should have he should actually have bet the turn here getting three bet. I mean, we could turn this into a 4 bet but I would do it with ace 5 suited here it's very borderline but we are quite deep and I don't like continuing when we're so deep and then having ace 6 suited hence the fold even though it was a close one there because I think you know, with 100 big blinds deep, that is a call, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. But even then, it's pretty much a break-even call. And being so deep out of position, it's going to transition to negative territory. Anyway, still a good start here. I think we've done some decent hand reading. I might have been wrong in a place or two, but in general, I was okay with it. And let's wait for the next interesting spot, which is not coming in the form of a four deuce off in the low jack. King six off is also a fold. Okay, ace ten off. This will be a hand that I could go either way, but because he makes it so small, I'm actually not only going to 3-bet, but I'm going to make it quite big. Let's actually go even bigger than that, 8.6. Let's see what my note oh, but This is interesting. He, I, my note is that he is a passive player, and if a passive player... Four bets me here to pretty big. I have to fold. Okay, that was a wasted opportunity. But we didn't know that we would get four bet there. Otherwise, we wouldn't have done it. King 10 off in the cutoff is definitely an open. We get called by the small blind. That's quite unusual. I will go with a big bet here because I do have two overs. I have some back doors here. The question is whether he actually called there with ace high. But I think this is just too good a card for me to barrel and not to take it. Because even if he has a hand like pocket eights, seven sixes, yeah, then he would fold now, and that's exactly what happened. So I'm happy I went for the double barrel there, even though I did not pick up any equity on the turn, but it was just a really good barrel card, because I don't think he necessarily called with ace high, maybe something like ace queen, ace jack, yes, but his hand was weighted towards pocket pairs or some connection with the board so once i bet there again and i went three quarters on the turn then he will let go quite a few of those hands and if he has a hand like pocket pair oh this is the more passive friend again with a snap three bet here i'll have to fold again yeah so if he has some medium pocket pair and he doesn't believe us that we have the ace and he calls there we still have six outs there the king and the ten so i didn't mind that big bet there despite not having picked up any equity on the turn eight seven suited 
will only be an open but not a continue if anyone raises so we have to fold here and it's 10 off well again if he had opened later and we were later i might have three bet this but being high jack against lower jack open ace 10 off is just a fold here we have an easy raise again uh, fold in the small blind that's usually indicative of a weaker player and this is a board that's ooh, i was gonna say that we could see bet i would have elected not to but i mean here i will just fold and i just want to see if anything develops no nothing develops there because both of us fold pocket kings i think this is an open even as early as low jack obviously being sarcastic here and we're hoping to get some action well we do get and we even get the king well he does fold quite a bit this is a board that i would see bet very wide so even though we have top set and we we could have slow played this one definitely but i sometimes do like to mix in um, c bets even with top pair uh, with top set um, because he could still have some pocket pair that he would call there. And yes, I most likely won't go to get three streets of value. But a player like him might not even have stabbed. Although, well, in hindsight, it's easy to say that it would have been better to just check behind and hope to get some action on the turn. But I'm okay with my C-bet. King 10 off will not be a continue against the low jack raise. This is a hand that I'm not going to continue with against any sort of a raise. Queen 9 off could be a borderline one, but don't need to, we just get a walk. 10-8 suited will be an open, but nope. Not continuing there. Right, pocket sevens, definitely an open. If we had gotten three bet here, it would have been tricky because it's a break-even call, so I think I would have just made it. Here, we can raise for value against the player who has not folded to a three bet yet so and he also four bets a lot so if we get four bet here to a normal size i would call but we just take it down happy with that jack eight suited is just a pip too bad from the hijack jack nine suited i would have opened but especially because i had uh, an aggressive player in the cutoff just behind me that makes it a clear fold. Queen 10 off in the low jack, not good enough. Can't continue with King 7 off. Okay, getting some not great hands, even queen eight off is not great, especially not if a tight player opens in the low jack. Ace 10 off as a hand that most player actually, players actually overvalue because it's just about break even to open in the low jack and if you're earlier than low jack in a full ring game then it's actually a fold but i think in this tight player pool i'm happy to open it under the gun under the gun being low jack in a six max i would still not open it in a full ring game here, this is very unfortunate because 
the problem now is that still I this is tricky because I would actually have liked to four bet, but I would have to jam here. So I will call with king queen suited, even though it is a squeeze and I'm not very happy about it. And this player is very aggressive. So with second pair and the nut flush draw, well, the not the nut flush, not the not on the backdoor flush draw. Yeah, this is another one, but because uh, he normally doesn't like to see that turns, I th still think he could have ace king here. I will just let this one go. It might seem a bit nitty, but I think I have to to let it go it, because it's the first time in four attempts that he actually bet the turn and he did it quite quickly it just didn't seem like a bluff and yes he could have a hand like ace queen or ace 10 but in in that case the queen might not be a great out okay here we have second pair this is a board that i would normally see bet quite a lot blind versus blind but we have second pair and we're facing an aggressive opponent which skews it towards a check and no reason to check raise here definitely not folding if he bets again now i will still have another call which doesn't the queen reduces his chances i think there is no reason for me to go for a block bet here i would call here because we haven't filtered at all but he just gave up he only had that one attempt let's see what he had oh yeah he had hearts king three of hearts so makes sense that he bet there but it was an easy call on the flop and then also an easy check after that Yeah, the king-queen suited hand, I'll have to look that one up in the solver later, whether it is a call against the big squeeze size there. But because he was such an aggressive opponent, he had like a, almost 20% um, 3 bet percentage, which is why I wanted to call there, plus I was hoping that... Um, recreational player and on the button would call behind and that didn't happen and then the three better was quite aggressive seabed flop and turn when he hadn't done that before seven three suited now i think i'll just fold here seven four suited i might have called but the mm, difference here is just the gap is just too big Six four suited would be an open if we get the chance. We do. And six four suited would be a fold here. I just go for a bet. It's nowhere near a range bet. However, if I can get a fold from anything, I would be delighted. And I do have some back doors. Okay, now we picked up a pair the question is should we continue barreling i think well i don't necessarily think we're good here but we wouldn't really get to fold a nine anyway i think definitely not a queen and here if he has some sort of showdown value like an ace high or so he might just check behind if he bets it's a fold we did filter on the flop and i mean he might be value betting a nine here maybe some probably not pocket six is seven something like that but like what bluffs does he have yes 10 jack maybe king 10 something like that but i just don't think there are enough bluffs there that said i only need about 25 percent to break even i still think I mean, I think it's close, let's put it this way. Well, I'll just fold here, but I think it is close because he does have few bluffs and he 
does have a few value bets. Yeah, I'd have to think a bit longer about it, but I think folding there is not really a mistake, or if it is, then it's just a very small one. Okay, come on, don't tank here so long, and then fold. Okay, definitely a call here against the min raise. We do have bottom pair. I'm not gonna fold to a C bet. The thing is, he hasn't C bet at all out of four opportunities. Here, I mean, it is it is a tricky one. I will just check again. Right, can we go for value here with fourth pair, seven, eight, nine, Jack? Well, ten beats us. I think this is such a tight and passive player that. I would just hope that he checks behind, and he does. And we win against pocket fours. Okay, I don't think we could have squeezed out any value out of pocket fours. Sadly, no action at all with ace-king suited. Jack 10 off will be an open here in the cutoff. We got uh, what seems to be a recreational player in the big blind. Quite three bet heavy, but with this hand, I definitely won't call. Four off, not a continue in the small blind. Let's see, check five suited. I'll definitely continue if he raises. Well, we've got a free pass here. Happy with that. See how well have we done? Well, basic breaking even, despite the good start. There were like three hands that I would like to look up again later. My pocket king's hand, for example, and the one just a couple of minutes ago where I folded the river. But in general, I don't think we've played too badly. Ten and off. I will not continue here against the low jack raise. King nine suited is an interesting one. Yep. So we shall open it, and we get snap three bet here by what seems to be a rather tight player now. I definitely can't call here and I could have four bet, but because I don't have much information about him, he seems very tight and he snapped three bet me. All those factors made me fold. On the other, on the flip side, you could say he was a button raise, but that's pretty much the only thing button against cutoff, which is why I considered three betting, four betting, sorry. Your pocket tens. I will actually, it's, I made it three X, which is not great, which is why I only call here. Okay, at this point, I don't think he's good enough at checking. So, 
checking back over pairs so i think you might have some showdown value um, the over bet was a bit greedy here because if he only has over cards he might not call however i thought maybe he has a pocket pair underneath top pair and in that case i could have gotten a call there plus i'm not unhappy about him folding over cards because they were live and it's okay to clear out equity now on the turn that's not as relevant as on the flop but still like if if he had like 25 sorry not 25 uh, 12 percent here sorry i will call just about here to two and a half x with queen jack off if you still had like 12 or 13% equity there, I am happy to do that. Here could still be, no, oh, yeah, this is kind of makes me suspicious. He normally C bets everything and this time he did not. And here I think I have a mandatory bet after he just didn't do it at all. Although I think I will get snapped off to a bit too much, but I still think I have to go for it and it's good that he folded because if he had just like king high which would obviously have beaten my queen high then it was good to just bet there and get him to fold that yeah so back to the hand before with my pocket tens if he had a hand like ace jack for example then he would still have about 12 13 percent equity there on the turn um going into the river so i was not unhappy with that here we have this player who just never folds to four bets zero out of six which is why i don't really want to four bet here and i definitely don't want to call with ace four suited there don't think that's good enough to do so Deuce of is a fold except for a small blind open. Eight seven suited, such a pretty hand. Obviously, going to open it. And he three bets us again. Ooh, and we have a cold caller here of the three bet, which is why I want to call as well here in position now. Guess flopping a gut shot. Yeah, this is a tricky one. If he C bets now, which he does, and he C bets half pot, which he should do if he does, and he gets called again. Oh, I mean. Normally I'd continue with a gut shot, but with the caller in between and also us not drawing to the nuts, because if we get the six of clubs here, any other six obviously would be good, but I just have to fold there. Now with the 10, we would have even had an open ender. I'm just going to watch this now because I want to see what these players are playing. So him going all in now, that suggests that he has an over pair. I just don't think he would have bluffed there over pair or possibly even a set. And by the way, in the small blind, he had most of the sets there. By three betting in the small blind against the button open. Uh, this one, tricky one against such a player. I will just start with a check here and probably even check fold well it doesn't do that so now i have the license to just try to bluff and it goes through so yeah this is something a lot of players miss the delayed c bets because we gave him the chance to bet for either thick value or thin value he refused that chance he denied it he didn't take it which means that he seemed quite weak and that's why i took the opportunity here i have a clear squeeze here with ace king suited 
we get a snap call by the lower jack and also the in between caller calls here i am going to go for well let's just go third pot we get another snap call i mean what what's he calling with i don't think i can what i'm gonna do is i just i'll just check behind even though by the looks of it i have a great hand oh, the queen is not great but the the issue that i had was that yes king jack king 10 but it won't call three streets i think which is why i opted for a check back on the turn because we were also three way in there and he snapped the flop like he did pre-flop so he could have ace king although i would imagine that he wouldn't snap that here i think i have an easy call even though he makes it two thirds but the problem is okay what do we win against he he probably won't do this especially with a bet size against king with a king jack king 10 he might have ace king but i kind of discounted that a little bit he has some queens that could be snap checks there queen jack he could obviously have king queen as well he I think pocket eights would not have been a snap, or he could have um, missed. The thing is, he is not very aggressive. I still think with top pair, top kicker here, I have to call. But, oh yeah, he had the... M wow, with jack nine of hearts, he snapped me off pre-flop and on the flop. I mean, I thought there was actually a close call there, but there you see it, players do just bluff and love to and actually yeah well once he got to that spot i think it was a good bet there ah this is a tricky one i would have just wanted to call but here now i kind of have to squeeze because playing pocket tens out of position against two players is not the best proposition and this is actually good that he folded and we got this guy here who what did he win he won the world championships of online poker okay i mean this with the bigger let me see i just think this one through i will see bet this one because we can still get called by fours through nines Whereas if I had had aces or kings, I think I would have gone for a check there. But with pocket tens, I still need protection. So very happy to see bet and get the fold. Absolutely delighted with the fold there, even though I most likely had the best hand. But if he has a hand like ace, jack suited, then I'm extremely happy with, a, with his fold there. Right here, we're going to open, obviously, the pocket kings. And the stack sizes are interesting here. If you see, this guy is 60, 130, and 340. But no action at all from either of the stacks, sadly. Okay, we're going for another 10 minutes or so. 6-3, well, after we get cold caller in the small blind, it's an easy decision. Otherwise, it would have been a bit close. I would have had to look at his stats. Here, we are very deep against the button. Let's see if he raises. Come on, button. He does raise, so this is an easy three bet. And they both fold, happy with that. Ten eight suited. Yeah, I was just looking because I have a player with the aggressive tag 
on the button, which is why I would have considered folding 10-8 suited anyway, because it's just a break-even hand in the cutoff. And if you then have aggressive players behind you, especially on the button, then I just think it's better to just fold preflop. Okay, 8-6 off, normally a fold, but against the min click here, I am happy to call. This is not the greatest of flops. I just have to call here still with my top pair. Now I don't have top pair anymore. He snap checks there. The question is, will he? He is quite passive, right? So I think I'll just check and take my showdown value, yes. Yeah, you see his snap check on the turn. What did he have? He had king jack with a heart, okay. But his snap check on the turn, combined with the fact that he normally doesn't bet the turn, zero out of four, that kind of told me that it's unlikely that he would bluff the river. So I have an easy check fold on the river and there is no need to value bet myself because I didn't think that he would do that. So this is the same player now. Pocket 4 is normally a fold here, but against the 2x I'll still fold it. Pocket 5s I would have 3 bet. But yeah, I just thought that he wouldn't bluff me, so I have an easy check fold on the river and because he wouldn't bluff then I could take my showdown and I didn't think that he had anything worse than my what was I think third pair at that point when I had um, the six and especially on that monotone board I would not have gotten much value out of him. Here 10-9 suited you can open I just don't really like opening I think I've said it before, I prefer opening 5-6 suited as my pretty much only suited connector in early position. Here I opened pocket 8s, get called, and this is a flop where I don't have a lot of bets, but pocket 8 is one of the bets because I need a lot of protection. If I can get him to fold king nine of hearts here, I would be very happy. And there are so many even offsuit hands. This I don't like now because he is very, a, a rather, not a passive player, but only see uh, three bets very little, but I still have to call here. And depending on what develops, he could have even a hand like pocket fours, four, five, six, seven, something like that. Now, when he continues here, a player that doesn't see bet much, 55% on the flop, 0% on the turn, I've got uh, 250 hands against him. I just think I can make an exploitative fold here because I just don't think he would continue with a hand like 4-5 necessarily. He might have two pair or so. I just think I'm I'm not good often enough here against this particular opponent. I gave him the recreational tag, the passive tag, so all of that. Here ace-3 off is just about break even, but again I have this very active player in the big blind and because it's a break even hand whether I raise or fold is exactly the same EV and against a, a hyper aggressive player that just moves it towards just not being that great. Here I would have considered even three betting definitely calling but not against a small blind three bet. Off, not continue. Yes, yeah, so recently someone asked me why I play the Zoom games, because the normal games would be much better value, and I absolutely agree with that. 
However, I think for the purpose of content creation on YouTube or on any other streaming platform, I think it's much better to go with the Zoom games. There is just more action, and I don't really want to be multi-tabling because as a viewer I know that can be very confusing. Here, I uh, just have to interrupt my thought. I have ace high, back doors, two overs, a player who doesn't see bet much. He see bets big. I think I just have to fold here. Yeah, so for content creation purposes, I think this is much better. It's much quicker. You can see a lot more hands. And I find it quite confusing if I multi table, especially if it's more than two tables. And if I single table, um, in 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 a, just a normal game and not a zoom one then there are just not enough spots and it just gets very boring quite often you have to watch a lot of players tanking and just doing random stuff and it's, it's just not that entertaining but obviously my win rate would be much higher at those games than it is here so let's see we have a cascade of callers we flop bottom pair on a board that I would almost never see bet against three players ex except maybe exploitatively with the nuts pretty much and now it's getting even worse and I would take a stab here against one opponent now with four clubs out there but I can't really do that against three players and now even against the one big blind I just don't see what I could could really beat here it would have to be an absolute bluff and yes I could have considered raising there but I don't think it's very credulous and I might be have been looked up by any club basically so I think I had to fold there sadly no action with ace check suited in the big blind king four suited will be another open here in cut off I think this one is quite borderline here we get three bet and he makes it very small we're getting a great price but we only have king four suited like with a slightly better hand this would be a no-brainer call but here I just can't do it with king four suited pocket queens the ladies Oh, we're not getting three bet just yet. We are getting three bet here now. Okay, so here in these these positions, we could consider jamming. We could consider four betting. We could consider three betting. Uh, I think well, all three options are fine. We're slightly deeper, so I will just call here. Let's see. Definitely not folding. Should I? My, he should have bet this one quite big here, actually. But I will just call, and we're getting the dreaded ace here. I really dislike this. And now he is going quite big. He normally, well, I can't say normally. I don't have much of a sample size here. This is a scare card, but three bet pots are not. Yeah, I just, I just don't feel comfortable. He, I lose to any ace, I lose to pocket kings, pocket tens, pocket nines, pocket fours if he has it, ten nine suited if he has that ace ten if he has it. I win against any sort of a bluff, but I just don't really see enough bluffs there for him. Yes, it's possible that he just used the ace as a scare card, but which which makes it quite close. It's not like a no-brainer fold, but I still think 3-bet pots are generally under-bluffed. And he did see bet the flop and then the turn, albeit he made it small on the flop. But even more so, that means theoretically I could have floated with a lot of ace-high there. It doesn't mean that he wouldn't use it as a scare card, but I just don't know the player. And because it is close, I just went for the lower variance route there okay i think i'm gonna wrap it up now 
sitting out the next big blind. Played for over 45 minutes. And here we are. We have one. $12 here. Let's have a look at today's graphs. Yeah, the, the red line really doesn't look great. I'm not very proud of it, but I think it was because we folded, well, basically it was the pocket king hands where we lost 80 big blinds and then just a few other big hands. I think in general my play wasn't too bad, but I just had to fold a few big hands or I chose to fold hands in tight spots and that's the reason why, but we still had a profit, so can't complain too much about that. Let me know if you would have done anything differently in the comments and hope to see you next time. Thank you. Bye.